Hey guys, Basil Hull with Grayson Hobby, and we have the video everybody has been asking for for the longest time. Yeah, so we're gonna take our jumper radio and mod it. Oh, dude. We're gonna convert the jumper T16 Pro to the jumper T16 Pro V2. What does that include, Will? V2 includes a foldable carry handle, a USB-C charging jack, and the new jumper backplate. So with this upgrade, you'll be able to charge your 18650 batteries directly in your jumper without Correct. taking them out, without modifying your case, or without any of that stuff. We have to solder three wires, very easy to do. Yeah, it's probably the easiest soldering you can do with even the most basic of soldering right. irons. And the cool thing is you can take it out of your, so of your radio, that way if you make a blob. Yeah, if you're not good at soldering, remove it from the radio, don't solder on the circuit board. All right, so here it is, video on how to upgrade to the Jumper V2. Hey guys, so if you're needing parts, switches, um, plates, all that accessories and all that for the Jumper T16 radio. Or the uh, Jumper radio. <laughs> or the Jumper radio itself. If anything Jumper With related that we carry, go to graysonhobby.com backslash jumper. Backslash. And then everything should be there. Yes. All right, guys, so Jumper sent us a kit of components that makes the Jumper radio into the new one. So everybody asking and paranoid that, oh no, what happened? I bought the old Jumper radio. Don't worry about it, it's not a big deal. There's very little changes and we're gonna about to show you, okay? So this is what we got. This is all the changes. A back plate, a folding carry handle, we'll take and the this bit. is the good stuff. We'll get to each one, and the charge port. So this is really the only, in my opinion, worthy update, but right. teach his own. So we'll start with that one, we'll do that last. Okay. <laughs> So the first thing is the new back plate. This is a plastic printed, uh, or not printed, injection molded part. So it's got really nice clips on it, holds in. It doesn't rattle around like the original um, empty module that they had on the jumper. So now that's official, the internal module is here to stay. Um, the next thing here is the carry handle. And that consists of a few pieces here, two set, two screws, two pivot arms, and the actual handle itself. So not much to it. It's like an injection molded, um, almost like a fiber composite material. Um, pretty nice. It reminds me of like the DX9 carry handle from Spectrum. So that's a pretty nice little handle there, but it does fold. How's it fold? Uh, it folds on itself, folds down. Okay. Yeah. So okay. it has literally minimal assembly. You'll mm -hmm. take your old handle out and nice. it pivots on itself. All right. So we'll show you guys how that works in a minute. And the best. The last thing, my... and this is this is the money right here. This is a built-in charging port and an upgraded USB-C port. This is something when we first got the jumper, I was really hoping it was going to have USB-C just because that's the way to go. It can plug in either way; you don't have to worry about it. Um, USB-C, a lot of phones. For those of you that don't use iPhones, USB-C is what Androids and all that have. Um, it's a nice charge port, it works really good, it can handle more current, and the connection, I feel, is more stable than some of the older USBs for computers and all that. All right. Now, with this upgrade, it does have this wire harness here. This will require soldering. I was really hoping this was not gonna require any solder whatsoever, but there is gonna be very minimal soldering. And guys, if you're really worried about it, the part you would solder to, and this is not part of the kit, is the SD card board. You can get it for just a few bucks. You'll be soldering to these pins back here. Um, so if you're really not, you know, you're not very confident about your solder jobs, um, you could purchase one of these boards, solder to that as well, um, instead of possibly damaging anything and getting your radio out of commission until, the next, until you get a part in. Yeah. So if you're worried about it, we do have these available. You can order it separately um, and then add it on. But let's get into the install on this. Got it all apart, got the screws out here. And remember, I like to pop the SD card out as well to get it out of the way when you're taking it apart. Then we're gonna pull it back off. And so you just got your six screws, the two on the top, the six smaller screws, and now we have access to everything on the back of the radio. All right. The part we're gonna be replacing is up here. This is the USB port. So it'll be two Phillips head screws, and a quick disconnect. All right, since we all know you want to see the soldering in USB for, first, we're gonna do this first. Well, a lot of people ask me the whole carry handle part. <laughs> so the carry handle is really easy. You use a 2.5 millimeter Allen wrench. There's two screws in here and you'll just unscrew. And let's... If you're taking, I've never taken mine off before. What, 
the mm -hmm. handle. Why would you, you don't need, need to? to. Yeah. yeah. So when you do the faceplate, you don't have to. Uh, have to go. All right. And that's the handle. Let's see if these screws are different lengths. Oh, these got little uh, little shims too there. So let's get them out of here. And I'm actually going to look. We might not actually even have to take these screws completely out. The screws for the replacement are the same length. So mm -hmm. you actually don't even have to take these screws out. We're gonna leave these in here. So those are the original screws you're leaving in. Yeah, I'm gonna leave them in. So when your handle falls off, we can just blame you, right? Yeah, pretty much. Okay. So you're gonna put the two pieces on. So they're on there, the pivot, and make sure the actual pivot mechanism is on the back side, the hinge. Um, the jumper logo will be at the top. The website will be on the back side. We're gonna put it over here, and I'm gonna just take one screw. I'm gonna line it up, and just I'm gonna screw it in a turn or two here. And then I'm going to go over to the other side and turn a, two, a turn or two in. Um, you don't want to screw one side in completely. Um, that way it gives it room for alignment. So we're going to go ahead and just screw it in. Just do a little bit of time. It's kind of like uh, changing a tire where you do, you know, one lug at a time. Go here, here. And now that I got it close, let's see. It might, no, it doesn't pop down. It literally just lines up on that. So now we're li lined up. So I'm just going to go and snug and snug and that's all there is to it so turn it that to the was side. really easy turn it to the side. all right no there you go show us how it works so now it just hinges back on itself so now you can get a smaller carry case and all that because that was the problem with the factory handle it made it so deep that a lot of cases were not deep enough to fit the radio okay. so now it folds down on itself pretty cool and if you have a multi-module let's see if that gets in the way so if you have the multi-module still it folds right actually under that. So that's really nice. Keeps okay. a nice low profile. So that's that. While we're back here, let's put this on. And then the updated jumper back plate. Right there. All right. So can we stall enough to get the USB part? Yeah. So now, <laughs> now we got the carry handle upgraded. We got the back plate on. And time for the USB. Moving the USB. So in this case, we're going to need a Phillips head screwdriver at this point and a soldering iron. That's right there. Yep. So I'm going to take the board and I'm going to go ahead and unscrew it first here. Get, actually, I'm going to get this antenna out of the way. Sorry, guys. Go ahead and unscrew the two screws here. You don't want to drop them down in the radio. So if you got a magnetic screwdriver, that helps. So the ribbon cable, again, in order to get these, there's a little black tab. You got to lift it up. You just pop it up with your finger and then it comes right out. Okay. So make sure you lift it out. You can't just pull on the cable and you don't pull this piece out. You literally lift it vertically. So that part's out. That's the old part. Yes. And now we're also, um, I'm not going to solder with this in the radio for the simple fact is if a little blob of solder fell or something like that, I don't want to get it on the, the circuit board or okay. anything like that. So you're going to take, so I'm going to go ahead and unplug the board here and I'm going to pop this little hinge out on this side here. And lift it up and then out. Yeah. All right, so now we got our circuit board here, and I'm going to go ahead and solder to this. Let me get my soldering iron equipment, and we'll come right back. What's the first step? Well, first we're going to measure. All right, so the factory wire is about seven inches long. Um, I am because it's going to be in the radio. I'm not concerned with it being too short or like shorting it up. It comes with the leads. They look like they are pre-tinned from how they shipped, but I'm gonna go ahead and just put a little flux on them, tin everything up, and then we're gonna solder together. Now, the solder on this is gonna be really easy, guys. So all you're gonna do is the black will go to the minus right here, the yellow will go to the middle, and the red will go to the positive. One more time. Red to positive, yellow to middle, black to negative. Okay. And that's all there is to it. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna tin the leads here. I flipped the board around just so it's a little easier for me to solder so you guys at home. And I'm gonna go heel. That's one, two. While you're doing that, tell us about your soldering iron. This is a TS-100. This is what I use for like everything if you've seen any of our videos in the past. Uh, it's a very popular iron to use. Um, More temperature heats up super you fast. Using? I got it at 400 right now, but three, 350 somewhere in there should be fine. Okay. It's just small wire. Got to remember if you do really high heat, you don't want to leave it on too long because you run the risk of transferring the heat and melting the the housing. Yeah. So 
probably a lower heat maybe but um that's really all there is to it let's take a look here so yeah. like we said before yeah it's out of three oh, red okay. red yellow black okay and, that's and you might get a little bit of hazing because they use a lead free solder i believe here so when you mix i i got 60 40 tends to give a little discoloration okay all right so guys one thing to be absolutely sure of is you do not bridge the between these connectors you do not want the solder to touch between these two if you have to take a meter and check continuity go for it but you do not want the solder to touch between these because you could potentially short out not potentially rainbow. you will short well i don't know <laughs> if there's a circuit that would prevent that or not oh, um well, i'm gonna guess you would but keep in mind so after you solder check there switch it around to the other side make sure no solder if you use too long a heat make sure no solder flowed down and bridged over here as well so you don't want any of these touching on the front or the back yeah. all right so now that we got that we're going to just reinstall using the new circuit board and go from there that's it that's it so now we're going to get this guy back in here the blue side's going to go up lift up the tab slide it in so got it lined up come on all right so we got it in there and then I'm just gonna close the tab. Now it's in. So you wanna make sure you get that in straight because if you do it sideways, you might have SD card read error, stuff like that. So in the event that you power it up and it says card read error, something like that, or no SD card found, make sure that cable is straight. Yeah. Now, so, sometimes you you see blue in there, right? You do see the blue. Yeah, So you're not that can vary. Blue, that, yeah. yeah, it can vary depending on where they put the coating on the connector. All right, so that's that, and then we're gonna rotate it. Now we got the board, the ribbon cable in, the board's back in and plug in the power then this wire is going to go to the new circuit board at the top so now we're going to take our new circuit board here and again blue side up and slide it in here i'm going to go ahead and put the ribbon cable in before i screw it in gives me a little more room to work with moving the cable around so now i got it in that's as far as it's going to go in lock it down and then we're just going to put the board in. So I'm going to take the screws from the old board and put it back in. You know what sucks more than anything about this thing? What? We only have one set. Yeah, and it's in my radio. <laughs> so I can't <laughs> do this to mine. All right, so we have our new board. New board installed. Wires. With our wires. Yeah. And we're going to just follow them up here. and. Yeah, and I'm going to run it. For argument's sake, I'm going to run it up this way around the module. Um, just so, because I, I don't want it laying over here under the gimbals and getting in the way of that. So I'm going to run it around here and up, and then we're going to plug it in. And the red will go to the inside. It is a polarized connector, but it is possible somewhat to f force it. So um, the black is going to go to the outside, the red is going to go towards the center of the radio, and it's going to run in here. And that's really all there is to it. You all done? Yeah. I mean, now I got. This seat it, the wires run away from the gimbal. So I'm gonna drop the Time back to shell off. Symbol three. All right, so we put it back together, right? Yep. All right, so the last thing is there is line that up. And the USB C does line up on the newer jumpers, guys. So here's a little thing that we found out in the process of updating these. So we'll get mine here. If you have one of the early jumpers here. Mine was the first generation ever made before the Hall yeah. Effect gimbal. So this is a, a jumper TX based one originally, but uh, there was a running change probably late November if I was to guess. See that um, cut out? The USB port, if you look, these two are slightly different. So jumper had in the plan, the plan in the works to update, oh, if I can get this, to USB-C for a while now. Because this rate, this plate, I've had for uh, I want to say it was Novemberish, um, early November is when we got them. So the USB cutout is different. This fits the USB C. So the new see, ones. See here, it fits it. Oh, let me see. Yep. And then the original one did not fit it. I don't want to pinch my wire, but you guys can see it doesn't line up. We're gonna get our hands on these plates as well and have them available with the us um with the kit. usb Come, charge yeah. yeah that way with oh new one or old ones always gonna work for you all right turn it on no smoke nothing hot fire yet that's a good sign there, there you have it the jumper t16 with the version 2 folding handle usb-c port and the new jumper backplate 
Simple as that. How long did that take us? 15, 20 minutes? 15, 20 minutes getting all the tools out. So it's pretty easy to do. Or you can charge your 18650 batteries in your jumper radio. Yep.